My next long-term review is going to feature Ardix Linux, and the only reason it was really on the poll in the first place was because several people asked me to take a look at it, and I thought, well, you know, I just throw it on the poll. Frankly, I thought OpenSUSE would win, and it came close, but Ardix ended up being the victor. And I'm going to spend some time in Ardix Linux. I've already started taking a look at it. That video will come out in the next couple of weeks or so. But I, what I didn't want to do in that video was take a long time talking about Systemd. Instead, in that video, I will talk about my experiences with running a distro that doesn't have Systemd. Instead, in this video today, I'm going to talk about the problems people seem to have with Systemd itself. Now, this is a topic that is very widely covered, but if I feel like... It's a topic that just keeps coming up and coming up because people, for whatever reason, just don't like System D, or at least a lot of people don't like System D. The poll that I put up had 17% of the people answer that System D was bloated. Another 52% said it was bloated, but they didn't care. So a vast majority of people think that System D is bad for one reason or another. So... What I thought I'd do today is talk about the three arguments people seem to have against System D, and then I will try to kind of counter them or say if I agree with them or whatever. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the first argument is the biggest argument, and that is that System D is bloated. Frankly, this argument is not a good argument at all, because System D is not a single program. Saying System D is bloated is saying like, Linux is bloated. Now you can make a good argument that Linux is bloated, but Linux is not a singular program. GNU slash Linux is a huge collection of many, many programs that enable the operating system to run. Systemd is similar in that because it's a collection of programs that do many different things. There's a huge misconception out there saying that Systemd is an init system. That's not correct. Systemd just happens to have and an init system contained within it. There's several other things that systemd does, from enabling system connectivity to replacing grub to several other high-level and low-level functions that enable your system to run. Systemd is a huge suite of, of software. It's not just an init system. You can't really say systemd itself is bloated because it's not just one thing. It's an, an umbrella over several smaller programs. Many smaller programs, I should say. It's just not a very good argument. Now, if you were arguing that the init system inside systemd is bloated, I don't really see how you could argue with that, because it's just one of the programs. It's not. I can't tell you how many lines the init system part of systemd actually has, compared to something like OpenRC or Runit. But I wouldn't be surprised if they're fairly comparable, because they're just init systems. Uh, systemd just happens to have other things that it also does that OpenRC and run it and similar init systems don't actually do because those are meant to be just init systems. The next argument that I saw in the comments of that poll was that systemd enables lock-in to a service. So basically the argument is this. Because it's so popular, it's become a standard, which means that Linux itself is so reliant on it, it would be hard to move away from. Now, if you ask me, this is the best argument against systemd. I'm not saying it's a good argument, but it's definitely better than systemd is bloated. Definitely because systemd is the most used system to initialize programs among many other things, Linux does rely on it. The vast majority of Linux distros out there, be they desktop Linux or server Linux distros, rely on systemd for various services throughout the system that enable it to run. And it would be really hard if for whatever reason, the people behind Systemd decided to make a huge change to Systemd and everybody hated it, it'd be really hard for each of those distros to find something else. But my argument against this one is that other init systems do exist. So just because we happen to rely on a standard similar to what we do with like Xorg or Pulse Audio doesn't mean that we can't switch to something else. We've proven that we can do that as a community. We can move to something else. We either move to Wayland or we're moving to Pipewire. And if Systemd happens to become horrible or the developers abandon it or it becomes a security problem, we'll move on to something different. We've proven nimble enough as a community to do that. Now, that leads us to 
The last argument, and it's kind of similar, is that System D is controlled by a major corporation, and this is true. The System D development is vastly funded by Red Hat, and in this case, probably IBM as well, because they now own Red Hat. And my argument against this is that, yeah, so what? Does that make Ubuntu bad because it's backed by a major corporation? Does it make Fedora bad because it's backed by a major corporation? Uh, just because something is backed by a major corporation doesn't necessarily automatically make it evil. There's this sense in the open source community that if you have the backing of a, a major corporation or a major corporation has control over your development, that it automatically makes that product or project bad. That's just not automatically the case. Now, if it was Google having control over System D, we could have a different conversation. But I don't think that you can argue that Red Hat is inherently evil and bad just because they're a major corporation. Uh, or even because they're owned by a major corporation. I think that it's actually a good thing for the most part because if we want Linux to succeed, even on a, such a small scale as it currently is... Linux needs those major corporate backers who are invested not only in funding Linux projects, but also developing them, because developers don't work for free. So if we want developers to put their effort into developing things like Systemd or Gnome or KDE or whatever, a lot of those projects that I just named have major corporate backing. Now, you can argue that because System D is controlled by a major corporation, it's vastly developed by a major corporation, that that is different than having just a backing of a major corporation. You could argue that, and I can see that point of view. But my argument against that is that it's open source. If Red Hat decided to go through and completely ruined System D like they did with CentOS. Let's just say they did. I don't think they will, but let's say they did. Well, the community could, as people did with CentOS, fork it and come out with a, you know, System E. <laughs> you know, whatever. You know, it, it, that's the nature of open source. If that scenario came to pass, System D would be forked almost immediately, and it would probably be forked by a company that had the resources to actually do things with it, you know, similar to what CentOS happened with CentOS. So those are the three arguments against SystemD. There are probably a few more out there that I just haven't heard about because people seem to really hate SystemD for whatever reason. And the best thing about Linux is that there are other init systems out there that you can use. Now, in my opinion, and from my brief experience so far with Arctix, they're not as good as SystemD simply because they don't do as much. But that'll be a topic for my next video when I talk about Arctix itself. So if you like this video, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is fun too. Marcus, Meglin, Sven, Jackson, Knife and Tool, Joshua Lee, Mitchell, Art Center, Merrick, Camp, Mr. Fox. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.